Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. Auzu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih al-Khatim wa ala ahli haqqati yamdad al-Adhim. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praises are due to the Almighty Allah, the Lord of the Universe, the most beneficent, the most merciful, the sovereign of the Day of Judgment. You alone we worship, and from you alone we employ help. Guide us to a straight path, the path of those whom you have favored. Neither of those who have incurred your wrath, nor of those who have gone astray. O oh Allah, maintain your praise persistently upon our Chief and Master Muhammad, the key to that which is close, the seal to that which is past, the upholder of the truth by means of truth, the proper guide to your straight path, upon his family, according to his eminence and his great honor. Assalamu alaikum once again. Good evening, everyone. Uh, happy Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem. As the title is shown on your devices, that we want to discuss the philosophy of five pillars of Islam. Maulana Shakta Smambochi. Allah well pleased with him provides a philosophical analysis of the five pillars of Islam. He said when you reflect on the five pillars of Islam you can see that the first pillar which is Kalimat Tawheed La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as it is positioned in the human head, that is the significance of head in the human body represents the significance of Tawheed in the five pillars of Islam. Once the head is gone, a human being can never live anymore. So, whenever there is no Kalimat Tawheed, no amount of devotion can make anyone to be considered as a Muslim. That is, whenever the Tawheed is lost, then everything else is lost. And the second pillar, which is the five daily prayers, is represented in the human system by heart. The heart of man represents its importance and significance. The heart in the human body. Of course, even when there is head, if the heart is sick or the heart doesn't function, that means such a human being will cease to live. And so is the enormous importance of five daily prayers when it comes to the religion. The Prophet said, Al Ahadul Lazi Bain and Nao Bain al Yahud as Salah. The only the only covenant we have that distinguishes us from non-Muslim is 
prayers, that is five daily prayers, if we are steadfast in the performance of five daily prayers, that means we are Muslims. And whenever we stop performing the prayers, then we cease to be Muslims. Then uh, that is the prayers. Then the in fact the third pillar of Islam, which is zakah or the distribution of regular charity. It is counterpart in human body is the belly that receives the food, digests it and distributes it across the organs of man. So you can see uh, how zakah is being received by the uh, that is the, 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 the authorities and how it is distributed among the members of the Muslim community and how you are, that, and, and you can see how vital and strong the organs of man are whenever he eats that whenever he takes appropriate food and the fourth pillar the fourth pillar of Islam is is the fourth pillar is Hajj. That is the I'm uh, sorry the the fasting of the month of Ramadan, whose counterpart in human system is the private part. The private part is hidden from. profligacy, that is, it is hidden from human sight, and it is still the private part that is being named. Only God knows whether it is there, whether it functions well or not. And so is the case with fasting. Only the servant that fasts knows whether he is truly fasting or not. And of course, the Almighty Allah, for whom the fasting is under is undertaken, for him the fasting is performed. Then the last one is the pilgrimage to the house of God to where they make pilgrimage is performed. You can see how implements, human implements are extensively involved in the performance of pilgrimage that is the hands and the feet so uh, whenever we go on pilgrimage you will, one will be taken to, to perform the tawaf then the sacrament blessing after the sacrament blessing around the holy cover seven times then the Circumambulation between the two mountains of Safa and Marwa. And of course, the right of standing on the spot of Arafah, then moving from Arafah to Muzdalifa, then the stoning, the right of stoning, you can see all these rites are performed physically, where you, you can see that the human implements are involved extensively. And that is the reflection of the hands and feet in the human body. And as if the structure of man is basically meant to uh, conform with what is required to be performed by the religion of Islam. And that shows you the originality of the religion as well as it is universality. It is the only universal religion. It is the only religion that the Almighty Allah chose for the entire creatures, right from the time of Prophet Adam down to the time of Prophet Muhammad 
these pillars of Islam existed in all courts of legislation that were sent down to the prophets, right from Prophet Adam down to Prophet Muhammad Not only the pillars, in fact, even the name of the religion had never been changed. Uh, no prophet had ever been sent without him being told that the religion with which he was sent is nothing other than Islam. That is why in the chapter Surah Al-Imran, that is the third chapter of the Holy Quran, the Almighty Allah made this point very clear in the Deen in the Lahi Al-Islam. The only religion worthy to be uh, considered by the Almighty Allah is Islam. And all the prophets that was sent. That's why you can see only Muslims believe in all the prophets. For example, Jews that followed Prophet Moses believe in him and they also believe in Prophet Abraham, Prophet Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob and other Jewish prophets. But they don't believe in Jesus Christ as a prophet. Neither do they believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu You can see where they stopped. They only pro uh, believe in Prophet Moses and his predecessors, and perhaps some few prophets that came after Moses, excluding Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. For the Christians, they believe in Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, and Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Although, they don't believe that he is a prophet. They rather believe Auz Billah that he is a son of God. Auz Billah. They ascribe him to the Almighty Allah as an offspring. Auz Billah. And we, the Muslims, we are the only religious group in the world that believe in all the heavenly messages with no discrimination against any. All the prophets. All their scriptures and all the messages, those we were told about in the Holy Quran, as well as those that we were never told about. The Almighty Allah said in the Holy Quran, in the chapter Surah Nisa, Warusulan Rikasasnahum Aleikam in Kablu, Warusulan Lam Naksasum Aleik, Wakalam Allahu Musa Taklima. Rasulan Mubashirina wa Munzirina li Allah yakuna lil nasi Allah hujjatun ba'da Rasul wa kana Allahu azizan hakima sadaka Allahu azim. The Almighty Allah said, Some of the prophets we narrated their stories to you, others about others we did not. And certainly the Almighty Allah spoke directly to Prophet Moses. This long series of prophets, the Almighty Allah said, I send them specifically for the purpose of, uh, for the purpose of stopping any claim by human beings on the day of resurrection that they were never warned about that day. So that they wouldn't come forward on the day of resurrection to claim that no prophet or no messenger had ever been sent to them. So, with this, one can understand that the Almighty Allah, uh, because the relevance of this discussion is that now there is a massive campaign for the unification of heavenly religions. To me, there is no need for that because the religion is already unified. Because for us, we believe in all the prophets that came before our dear prophet. All the prophets, with no exception. Uh, and we believe in all their scriptures. So, that alone is a clear testament to the fact that ours is the only universal and global religion that recognizes all the prophets who came before ours 
and recognize and believe in all the scriptures that preceded our scripture, that is the Holy Quran. So that means that uh, whatever adherence of any heavenly religion believe in, we do believe in it. With the exception of certain points at which they went too far, that is the perhaps, for example, where the Jews claim that Ezra is the son of God, Billah, where the Christians claim that Jesus Christ is the son of God, this is the only difference we have with them. Otherwise, we believe in all the messages of heavenly origin. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, in the next session, we are going to continue exactly where we stop. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih lima uglik wal-Khatim lima sabak nasir al-Hakki bil-Hak wal-Hadi ila suradika al-Mustajim wa ala aliyah qadim dal-Azim subhanabika bizita masirin salam 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 alaikum